What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now, today's video is one that um, I think is kind of an interesting topic of how to make uh, your memory better, how to increase your long-term memory, just any kind of tip or trick on how to make memorizing and learning material easier. Um, and I actually I was watching a few different uh, documentaries on this. I saw some YouTube videos. I was reading some articles. And everyone seems to be saying the exact same thing on how to increase your memory. So I'm, so I'm not claiming any kind of credit. This is all coming from just a variety of sources that I was reading uh, and watching. So here's kind of a, a little synopsis or kind of a literature review of what I'm going to give on how to increase your memory. And it's something that I think we've all done, but we never kind of made a big deal about it to remember. Um, and all of them pretty much say the following comment, that if you wish to increase your memory when learning material, what you need to do is actively learn the material by making a visual and auditory like movie or scene in your mind. And what that means is that if you wish to remember, um, say, something rudimentary, say, say you wish to learn... Um, so, so, so in the skull, if you look at the skull, you have like a bunch of holes in the skull, uh, you know, cranial cavities as we call them, and stuff goes through them, vessels and nerves, um, and you, you have to, I mean, it's kind of basic, you have to know what goes through all of them. And when, there's two kind of main ways, I, I remember when I was learning these, I employed this strategy of uh, making these kind of movies in my mind. Um, so when you would look at like one of them, uh, I'm not going to be too dirty here, but um, so, if you, so if you look at, a, um, at something you're trying to memorize, look at the name and try to make a movie out of it. Um, so you have like on one of them, it's, so one of like the skull for women called like Freeman Rotundum. It looks round, Rotundum kind of sounds like rodeo. I don't know. You know, whatever works. Like these kind of little mental games, you know. So what I used to think of was like I would I would think of Freeman Rotundum and I would in my mind have like this rodeo and I would have these vessels and nerves. You know, it sounds kind of weird. But I, you know, I remember when I finally, because I remember when I was learning these cranial cavities, there was like so many of them and I'm like, oh, this is so boring. Because uh, I, I did, it wasn't exciting because I didn't get why it was important at the time. Um, but, you know, as I said in the, you know, in another video about, um, regarding group study, I mentioned it there. But uh, looking forward to clinical correlates is a nice little trick to uh, get yourself excited about material. So once I started looking at clinical correlates and realizing the importance of knowing what goes through different cranial cavities, I really got into it. But this comment I made regarding thinking of like Freeman Rotundum and like a rodeo and like these nerves and vessels like doing weird things and like cows and like rope. Um, that's kind of the strategy that I've read on a lot of things that if you need to think of a topic, kind of play a little like you know, a little, uh, think of it like, like on YouTube, like a short little YouTube clip in your mind um, of something going on that has to do with the content you're learning. Does it have to be completely scientific? But, I mean, a rodeo is not scientific, but, you know, whatever works to get you to remember it. Uh, one, like, example I remember seeing, this was actually a YouTube video, a TED Talk on memory, um, and the guy had, a, I think, a 15 to 20 minute video, and he remembered everything he wanted to mention in his uh, talk by having this long, like, movie in his head of like opening a door going into a living room seeing like a cookie jar opening it up like and everything he did throughout this progression of like this little short clip he had in his mind of entering his house and doing something every step along the way had a it was like a significant time marker for him to mention a new topic in his speech so a 30 or 20, 10 to 20 or maybe was it a 30 minute um talk he gave, he did it completely from memory because he was following this little mental movie he had and those little markers he had placed to know, okay, what's the next topic I need to discuss as opposed to having flashcards that listed it for him. Um, and I think the, the other topic I heard was um, people who have these memory competitions. Um, across the nation of, you know, they'll be given like a stack of cards or a long list of just random numbers uh, or like a deck play uh, deck of playing cards in some random order and they have to just memorize them um, in a short period of time. And the way they do this is that they see the order and they develop some kind of movie or skit or something in their mind. Now we can apply the same principle to learning and I, and I think we've all done it sometimes but we just haven't um, had it pushed in our face to say, hey, do this more often, you'll get more of a high output with your learning. 
And I know, and I noticed this actually halfway through about uh, the first year of medical school. Maybe it was, I don't know, I'm, I'm saying halfway through. I don't know. Like the, like the last few months, I really got into it and it really paid off. Um, so that's what I want you guys to try and do. When you're learning content, don't just learn, like, don't um, just read it. Don't just, um, uh, don't just like learn it and just be able to recite it verbatim. Really think about it. That's the number one thing. So you have a rich kind of, you can malleable understanding. But to be able to do that, you do have to be able to recall a lot of content or details. And on that part, try doing this whole thing of if you have to learn a series of details regarding some content, try to make a little movies. Try to make something relevant and understanding to you. Um, whether it be some kind of playful mnemonic that you can kind of see in your mind that has both the auditory and visual component. Um, That'll work great. So, like one example for that uh, was the branches off of the external carotid artery, and the mnemonic is um, what is it? It's like uh, some so yeah. So it's like some attendings. Um, no, what is this one? Yeah, it's uh okay. So there's two of them, but uh, one of them is like some attending is like um, freaking out potential medical students. There we go. Um, and the reason I like that is that the actual mnemonic, though it took me a couple seconds, but anatomy was a while ago. Um, of, you know, so, so some some uh, attendings like uh, freaking out potential medical students. It works because you know the first letter tells you the branch off of the artery, but the actual it's a it's like a memory you can have. It's like a little movie you can play of like attendings freaking out potential medical students on interview day, right? So it's like it's both playful in the sense of the mnemonic helps you auditory wise to remember the order, and the movie itself uh, that you play in your mind of an attending freaking out a potential medical student is something you can kind of understand, um, and you won't forget that. So you know that I think is valuable because I mean now it's the, it's like July. And I, the last time I had to know all the branches of external card order was like about one and a half to two months ago. And if I were to have studied the way I did at the beginning of the year, where I just would have memorized the branches, just memorized them, um, I wouldn't have been able to fit, like, think about it now. But now I had a two-fold strategy to attack it, to recall it. Uh, the first being I had that kind of playful auditory mnemonic um, of you know some attendings like free, and then the second, of having the kind of visual com content of that. So now, though it took me, I mean, I played this in real time, so I didn't, I didn't actually I didn't think about this example at all, so you got to see it as real as it comes. Um, it took like a little bit of fumbling on my part, but it didn't take more than probably 10, 30 seconds, uh, where I kind of finally figured it out. So that has great value, because if I would have studied the way that I did in the beginning of the year, who knows how long it would have taken me, or if I would have just forgotten it all, 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 all you know, that forgot it all at once. Um, so it obviously works to some degree. The example I gave of the branches of external carotid, I don't know why I picked that one, but um, hey, it was a real example, and it, you know, it's on, on the spot we figured it out together. So that was really good. So as you can see, that that's kind of a more simple example, but as content gets more um, involved, you can develop more and more of both auditory and visual components of like, these stories you can put together in your mind to help you recall them. All right, so that's my little, uh, it's not necessarily a trick or it's not like some kind of selling scheme. It's just something that I read about, I started employing and it's been paying off and we had a real live example that I didn't plan, so I'm pretty happy about that. And, um, and it works, obviously. And, I mean, you can look it up. Look it up on YouTube. Look it up on um, articles online. You can read um, research articles if you even go on PubMed. Um, but that, that TED Talk, I'll try to find the link and put it below of the guy who learned about these kind of memory techniques and you can just apply them to your learning and wow you have long-term memory that we didn't have before and before I end I'm going to give one more citation <laughs> I feel like I'm writing a thesis but one more citation our actual physio one of our physiology professors um, he actually said this that when he I mean he's able to he said he's an older man now that he's able to re recall content that he learned in medical school because he actually employed that same principle of applying like movements and actions um, auditory these movies in his mind to remember them and with respect to actions which I'm going to mention here in closing uh, some like physical motions you make help you also recall things. I don't know why, um, but like whenever I think of the word genomic imprinting, um, I have to do this.
I don't know why. Uh, for some reason, when I think of genomic imprinting, I kind of do this with my hands like I'm waving. Because uh, the very first time I was learning about genomic imprinting, I happened to do this. And now every time I do this, I'm like, oh, yeah. and it, it just comes up. How? I have no idea. Don't quote me. This isn't like a research thing. But like my professor, whenever he would like do some like weird motions, he would be able to like recall certain medications or diseases. Try it out. Maybe it'll work for you. There's no harm in any of these things. You know, if it doesn't work, throw it away and go back to your old study techniques. But um, hope you guys employed this kind of more active, engaged style of learning, and hopefully it instills contents and gives you that long-term recall that we all want. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave questions, comments, anything you want below. I'll send me a message, a video response, whatever you want. I'll figure it out. And as always, guys, enjoy your studies.